Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sadman. Nice of you to drop by. So this video is about how I revised my A-level chemistry exam in just under two months to go from what was essentially a B to an A star. And today I'm going to just explain how I managed to do that. So as soon as I found out I had to do the exams, I knew I only had around 50 days to revise until exam day. And I had to kind of map out my time. And to do this, I printed out the calendar on like four pieces of A4 and I stuck it together. And so I could kind of visualise how long those 50 days actually were. So after I could see how long I had, I needed to figure out where to begin. And for this, I had a secret weapon, my bestie, the AQA A-level chemistry specification. She was... A real one throughout this whole process she was with me till the end if you're doing GCSEs or A-levels I highly 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 recommend having it because oh my gosh she was a lifesaver she's an icon she's a legend and she is the moment now come on now all the topics in the spec I put it into a spreadsheet and each day I revised a topic I used to color code it red orange or green so red being that I really don't understand this let me jump off a cliff Orange being that I kind of do get it, but I do want to revise a bit more because I'm still a bit unsure. And green being like, I get it, I'm a genius. I have mastered that topic. I'm telling you, I have the mind of a master, master, I have the mind of a mastermind. What's that? I don't know, but you know, I'm so creative like that. <laughs> I actually got this idea of a retrospective exam timetable from the productivity guru himself, Ali Abdel, and it was a really helpful revision tool and really helpful to kind of keep track of all my topics. So now that I knew exactly which areas to work on, I launched straight in and I got revising. My way of revising would kind of be like an evolution. It would kind of be a staged process, starting from not getting the topic to mastering it. And stage one is the note taking phase. So this is when you first meet the topic. She's new in town, go and say hi. And this stage is important because depending on how you go about it, the topic could either be your best friend or your worst enemy. So you need to follow some simple guidelines when approaching a topic. And can you guess where I found those guidelines? Who can we ask for help when we don't know which way to go? Spec, spec, spec. So I used my spec to take kind of the base notes of the topics I hadn't learnt yet because of lockdown and I would do all my notes in a very specific way. So as you know the specification is arranged in a bunch of bullet points so I would write the top spec point as the title of my notes and then the first kind of bullet point I would do in blue. In black ink I would expand on that spec point using resources such as my textbooks, Elliot Rintoul, Physics and Maths Tutor, Chem Sheets, Chem Revise, and I would use those resources not to take notes but to annotate my notes. I'll link down all the resources I used in my revision in the description to kind of make it easier for you to access. So now that stage one was complete I decided to jump straight into the deep end and start stage two by attempting my first set of exam questions. So something I found out about exam questions in chemistry and I'm sure for other subjects as well, is that the questions are so repetitive and the mark schemes are quite predictable. Each topic kind of has a template mark scheme that they want you to follow. So for example, if you had like the molecule PF3 in the shapes of molecule topic, um, the kind of template mark scheme would go like this. So the first mark would always be for stating that phosphorus is in group five. So it has five valence electrons and these three more electrons for a full outer shell. The second mark would always be for stating that fluorine is a halogen, so it's in group seven. So it needs one more electron for a full outer shell. Third mark would be for stating that there are one lone pair of electrons and three bonding pairs of electrons. And the fourth mark would be for stating that bonding pairs repel more than lone pairs. And the fifth mark would be for stating that it's in a pyramidal shape. And the sixth mark would be stating that the bond angle is 107.5. I made it through. I made it through. By kind of memorising that kind of template mark scheme, I was able to kind of work my way through the question. And by doing this, you've just got yourself six easy marks. So that was a kind of really useful um, thing to identify when I was doing exam questions to kind of identify the repetitive mark schemes. And I would also copy these mark schemes down into flashcards. So this is stage three, the flashcard making stage. So I would use my flashcards to memorize these template mark schemes. So I'd write the question on one side and I'd write how many marks it's worth. And on the other side, I'd write all the bullet points on the possible marking points. I would also use flashcards to memorize things such as reactions and mechanisms. So for example, in my mechanisms flashcard, I would have two kind of reactants and then on a rough piece of paper, I would write out the mechanism, write out the product of that reaction, write out the reagents and the conditions, and I would turn it around and I'd mark if I got that right or if I got it wrong. So to go through my flashcards, I would do it in a kind of Quizlet way. 
in that I would have three piles. So my first pile would be the kind of right pile, the second pile would be the wrong pile, and the third pile would be the discard pile. If I get a question right, it would go to the right pile. If I get a question wrong, it would go to the wrong pile. After I finish that kind of first stage, I need to get the questions in the right pile right two more times for it to go to the discard pile. And in the questions that I got wrong, I need to get it right three more times to go to the right pile, and again, two more times to go to the discard pile. And that way I kind of force myself to get everything right and I wouldn't end my kind of revision session without getting everything into the discard pile. So now that I'd finished all three stages, I would repeat stages two and three until the colour on my spreadsheet would change from red to orange to green. Sometimes when I would kind of finish all those stages, at the end of each topic, as a summary, I would create a poster to stick on my wall. So I'd once again go back and visit my bestie, the specification, and kind of use that as a guideline to form my posters. Through doing this, I managed to learn all the topics in about five weeks, and the rest of the time I dedicated to exam practice and flashcards. Even though my revision days seemed so monotonous and repetitive, I still managed to stay motivated and positive through making my revision fun and enjoyable. And during my days, I initially tried following Karma Medic's two, four hour block kind of plan, but obviously my attention span's like very tiny. I get distracted very easily. So instead of doing two four hour blocks, I did four two hour blocks with kind of short breaks in between. Um, and in those breaks, I'd kind of go grab a snack, go to the toilet, play some Among Us. Um, Among Us actually really carried me throughout the whole revision process. Um, anyway. Um, ciao. Anyway, so. I'd also listen to music while I revised, but I wouldn't listen to kind of music with words in it. I'd listen to instrumental music with kind of like movie soundtracks. I'll link my Spotify playlist in the description as well. I'm just gonna leave you on this last kind of thought, and that's that exams aren't the be all and end all of everything. Um, there were some days where I really struggled, but then I realised that it's, it's honestly not the end of the world. More than kind of doing well academically, it's important to take care of yourself. Have some time to wind down. I would light a candle, I'd play some music, um, and I'd like sit in a corner of my room and like maybe read a book or watch something. And I made sure that I had that time to wind down. It's so easy to burn out and kind of get exhausted with it all. And it's really important even when you're revising to take some time to yourself and take care of yourself. And it honestly doesn't matter if you make mistakes. Mistakes are there to be made and if you don't understand something that's okay because it's a learning curve. You're not required to get everything right away. I didn't understand things right away and initially I did used to beat myself up about it but then I realised that you can't understand anything straight away but you can make yourself understand with some patience and some time. So just remember that it's completely okay to be stuck or confused and to make mistakes as well. Um, I made a pretty big mistake in my actual exam. I remember that there was a nine mark question on ions and aqueous solution on a double page and ions and aqueous solution was a topic that I really enjoyed towards the end. I struggled with it at the beginning because it was like taught during lockdown, but near the end, I really grew to kind of enjoy that topic. And as I was turning the page, I turned over the double page in my actual exam and I lost myself nine easy marks. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. Needless to say, in the next two papers, I made sure I kind of scrunched up every leaf of paper and like made sure that it was just a single leaf of paper when I turned around and I learned from my mistake. I made sure that I would never make that mistake again. So I would say overall, make your revision process one that's enjoyable, take care of yourself when you revise and just kind of treat it more like a hobby than a chore and you'll pretty much be set. Good luck for your revision and I'll see you in a bit. Bye.